Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're gathered here today that we might learn of You, that we might hear Your Word preached, and that we might experience the power of the Holy Spirit. And God, we pray that You'll anoint our pastor, that he'll bring a word You've prepared for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Clap your hands to the Lord if you can do that. Hallelujah. Ain't the Lord good? I'm glad you are. This is beautiful. The presence of the Lord, Sister Creasy, such an awesome job with that uh, message on the blessings of God. Man, you, when you think about the blessings of God, it, 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 ne it never ends. You can just keep on and on and on remembering things that God has blessed you with. Somebody said, well, you know, I give, give, give. God never blesses me. Well, that's not true because you're getting that, that you give from somewhere. You know, so you're just, the blessings of God make us rich. And uh, I see old uh, Dale eased in here on me. And I know what he did. He tried to hide. And, but he can't hide. He can't hide. Even good to see you today. All the guests, good to have every one. Let's give all of our guests a good name today. Praise the Lord. Amen. The book of uh, Acts, chapter 16. If you got a Bible, if you don't, he'll put it on the screen in case you don't have a Bible. But if you have a Bible, if you own a Bible and don't have it with you, say, Lord, help me to remember my Bible. Okay, now good. If you don't, if you don't own a Bible and you want one, you see that young man that was doing this conducting here today, and he'll give you a Bible. It will cost you a penny if you just read it. Amen. It just it makes you wise unto salvation. Yeah. Amen. Acts chapter 16, verse 29. This was a time when the apostle Paul was thrown into prison, him and Silas. They were put in the stocks, which were chains, and they were uh, bound in prison for, for preaching the gospel. And so, uh, and the, the Bible said at midnight, now this is not part of what my reading, but the Bible said at midnight, Paul and Silas sang praises unto God and worshiped God and, and the Lord heard them and he sent an earthquake and the prison bars, the prisons were shaken and the doors were open and the stocks and the chains fell off their hands and feet. You don't tell me they don't have something to be, to out, uh, be thankful for blessings. Then the Bible said in 29, then he called the, and the guard heard all of what was going on and he comes up and, and calls for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and besought, uh, brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? If something happened in that in that whole ordeal that he got the idea that God had did this. Because he asked, what must I do to be saved? And I'm going to preach a few minutes this morning. What must I do? Lay your Bible down. Lift your hand. Sing me a chorus, young ladies. You would, just a chorus. I want you to lift your hand just for a minute. And let's touch the Lord today. Lord, we thank you today, Father. Bless this service. Bless the message, messenger. In the name of Jesus, we're thankful today, Lord, that you're with us. We pray, God, you're a blessing upon each one. Lord, fill us with your spirit today. Take charge of the service, Lord. Touch each one. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Be seated. I read where in the book of Acts, Back earlier, back long about chapter two, I read where they uh, and they came to Peter, and Peter was preaching a sermon about Jesus, and he was telling them that this is the same Jesus that you crucified. That when Pilate was determined to let him go, you dis you desired uh, for him to be crucified, and said you crucified the Holy One and the Just, and you. Uh, allowed them to, or asked for them to release uh, a thief and a, and a robber uh, before you and crucified our Lord. And in his, somehow in his sermon, now I'm not quoting the whole thing just word for word, but somehow in that sermon that, that Peter was preaching, and by the way, it was the first sermon 
every priest in the New Testament church. So he preaches this sermon, and somehow in that during that sermon, the Spirit of God, the anointing of God, touched their hearts. Uh, something happened that God's Spirit ministered to them, and, and Peter told them that they were the ones that crucified the Holy One and the just and desired a, a, a Barabbas to be released unto you and said, and it's your fault, you did it. And so they recognized that this is what was taking place and so they came to Peter and said, sir, what must we do? We recognize we did this, now what can we do? What, what shall we do? And Peter said to repent be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a remarkable thing. It's an amazing thing. He never left out baptism. Matter of fact, he was right on the same list. Repent and be baptized. Uh, he didn't say anything about repent and, and join the church of your choice. And if you want to, sooner or later, later on down the road, if you feel a, a need to, you can be baptized. He said he didn't say be baptized into a local assembly. He said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, baptism is for remission of sins. It's to remit your sins. So what we and you and I have to do today, we have to understand what the Scripture says. The Scripture says to repent and be baptized and receive the Holy Ghost and live a godly life and serve the Lord and give your life to Him and submit everything over to God. That's what the Scripture teaches. Amen. Now church creeds and church denominations and, and a lot of church books, they don't, they don't teach none of that. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not teaching what the United Pentecostal Manual teaches me. I'm teaching you what the church manual teaches me. The church manual says repent and be baptized. Every one of you, that means the deacon board, the elder board, the trustee board, the preacher, the preacher's wife, the preacher's kids, the preacher's grandkids. That means everybody, every one of you, including all, excluding none, in the name of Jesus Christ. And ye shall receive. You say, I've been in a church all my life, never been baptized that way. Well, you were baptized wrong. That's not, if it wasn't using the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you wasn't using a biblical term for baptism. You say, well, it worked for me. Well, it may have worked for you up to today, but it won't work after today. Because I'm going to tell you the truth today. I'm not going to tell you what some organization teaches. I'm going to tell you what the Word of God teaches. Here this jailer said, sirs, what must I do? I'm going to tell you what you need to understand and, and need to understand it right now that the Word of God teaches us that eternal life comes only by grace through Jesus Christ. And that's it. Amen. My works ain't got nothing to do with it. No, sir. It's by the grace of God. Heaven is nothing that we've earned. It's, it's nothing that I deserve. I cannot say, Lord, I deserve a second chance. I'm going to tell you what I deserve. I deserve the same thing you deserve. I deserve judgment if I don't get my heart right with God. That's what I deserve. I can't say heaven is something I've earned. I've earned it. I've given my tithe. I paid. I give money. I give the missions. Sister Christian mission, she's for Christ. I give she's for Christ. I give Mother's Memorial. I give for Christmas for Christ. I give for the youth. I give every little bit I can, whenever I can, to everything I can. But that don't give me a ticket to heaven. What gives me a ticket to heaven is when I repent of my sins. I get water baptized in His name, and I get full of the Holy Ghost, and I start living a godly, clean, dedicated life. That gives me a ticket. And it ain't nothing I earned either. Just because I'm the preacher, that don't exclude me either. The Bible said in Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not a word, lest any man should boast. We can never do enough good stuff that God would overlook our sins. We can't give enough. We can't pray enough. We can't come enough. We can't cut enough grass. We can't paint enough walls. We can't sweep enough carpet. We can't clean enough commodes. We can't do nothing enough to earn what God has for those that love Him. 
Because the Bible said I can't do enough good things. I can't do enough. I can't do en enough good things to deserve any any free privileges. Uh, oh, you might get me to say, boy, you've done good. I appreciate what you've done. And, and that's okay. That, that has its place. But that doesn't get you into heaven. What gets you into heaven? I'm going to say it again. At least one more time I'm going to say it today. you got to repent of your sins. you got to get water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And you got to have the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. There's Christ in you. It's the hope of glory. So i got to understand that. I, got, I need to understand what the Bible says. Yeah. I got to understand what the Word of God teaches me. The Word of God teaches me. I got to understand God's Word. I got to understand what God's Word says about man, about mankind. What does God have to say about me? What, what does God say? God, God talks about me in the Scripture. You know what God said about me? It said, You're a sinner. Right. That's what the Word of God tells me. The Word of God tells me, I can prove that. That's a, that's a scary subject, but I'm going to turn temporarily right over here. I, I can prove to you in the Scripture that unbelief is sin. That it, it Just unbelief is sin. You say, oh, now, preacher, that won't keep you out of heaven. Well, that's, that's your opinion. I can show you something else for it. The Bible said if you know to do good, and do it did not to him it's sin. So we, the Bible teaches us and tells us that man is a sinner because Romans 3.23 said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it also says in Psalm 51 and 4, against thee and uh, uh, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. So see, the Scripture teaches me that I am a transgressor, that I was a transgressor. I transgressed God's law. I had nothing to do. I, I, I didn't live for God. I didn't live right. I knew right. I knew what was right. Been going somewhere just about all my life, in and out. I, I looked for her for a long time, found her, found her, and, and I found her in church. And, and I've been in and out of church. I went to Trinitarian churches. I went to Baptist churches. I went to Methodist churches. Never did do too much with the Church of Christ. They scared me. But, you know, I, I went to Pentecostal churches. But listen to me. Until the day I found Jesus Christ and came into my life, I was a sinner. A good sinner. I don't mean I sinned a lot. That means I was a good boy, but I was a sinner. I never mistreated my family. I always kept a little food around just in case we got hungry. I always tried to make a living. I, was, I always come home after work. I didn't go out honky tonking and whore jumping. I came home where a man ought to come that's a married man ought to be, ought to be at home. Come on, somebody. I, I know I'm rude. That's okay. You, you, you've heard worse. But when, when, when at 4 o'clock or 4.30 whistle went off, I didn't even take time to wash my hands, got in the truck and went home. I washed my hands and got home. I was a good sinner, but I was a sinner. And I was on my way to a devil's hell. As sure as there is a hell, I was on my way to hell. Until one day, I felt the master touch me. One night in a sleep, I felt the Lord touch me. I woke up, shook her. I said, you need to call your preacher. I got to talk to somebody. I got to have some help. Are you hearing me right now? I'm telling you, I was a sinner. One writer, one writer wrote a song and said, I was a wrong road, choosing, losing, sinner. But Jesus made me a winner. Praise the Lord. Be ye therefore. See, we can't measure up to God's standard. Oh boy, I got a cold one on that. <laughs> well, if you could, why was there a Calvary? Yeah. Yes, amen. I can't make God's perfect. God, I'm going to read it to you. It's found in Matthew 5 48. It's very simple. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which in heaven is perfect. How can I live up to a standard that says perfect? I could, the only way I can come close to that, I have to give my life to Him. As I said, I was a good old boy. I was just, I was just a pretty good fella. But I, I wasn't living up to God's standard. The only way I can live up to God's standard 
I can do that through Jesus Christ coming into my life. You talked about it in the Sunday school lesson. He's got to feel my life. When God feels my life, then it becomes possible for me to live like the Bible said live. Because I've got Jesus. Because God is a loving, holy, caring creator. And he, come, and he created me with one thing in mind. He created me to live for him. I was not created to live out there in the world of sin and act like a crazy idiot and live that kind of lifestyle. I was born to serve the Lord. I was made in his image. I was made in his likeness, so he made me to serve him. Every one of you, you were made to serve God. You say, well, I'm not serving God right now. Well, you're living beneath your privilege. You're not, I mean, you're a bad person. I wasn't a bad person. My wife will tell you, I was a good provider. I'd done the best I could. We, we could go to the uh, uh, place and, and buy a coat, and we didn't have to have six straws. <laughs> we were doing pretty good. But I was a sinner. I was on my way to hell. Know ye not that the Lord, He is God? It is He that is made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. God created me in His own pleasure. He created me just like He wanted me. He chose to do what He did. He chose to create me. He created me and therefore because He created me, then I am totally dependent upon Him. Whatever I have to have or whatever I need, I'm, de I'm totally dependent upon Him. It's like a little child. I think I saw a baby here. That child is totally dependent upon somebody to give them what they need. If that child needs milk, then mama or daddy or somebody has to furnish that milk for that child because he's dependent upon that mother or dad or grandparents or whatever it is. And when God created us, he made us where we're dependent upon him. I have to depend on God for my salvation. I can't, it's nothing I can do to earn salvation. I can go to the house of God and I can be a pretty good old boy and I can help the pastor. I can, I can wash his car. I can shine his shoes. I can buy him steaks. I can do whatever so I desire. But I can't earn salvation. The only way I can get salvation is I have to be dependent upon Jesus Christ and the work he did at Calvary. If I don't depend on Calvary, I'm going to be lost, ladies and gentlemen. If I don't have my, my, my dependency upon Jesus Christ and what He done at Calvary, I will not make it. Yes, amen. Care what them nitwits on television tell you. They're educated idiots. Yes, sir. I call them the stupidity of the specialists. The ignorant of the experts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna name them. You know I am, but I guess I better not. I, I'll be, I'll be good, like I said I would. I'll be a good one. God, in His own choice, created me. There's preachers that tells you somewhere. I, this one preacher somewhere between New York and California. <laughs> He'll tell you that there's salvation other than through the name of Jesus. He's a liar. I didn't say that. This, right, this book did. My book, this book said if a man come to you and bring not the gospel of Christ, don't even receive him into your house. Don't even bid him God's speed. Don't tell him, praise the Lord, my brother. Don't say, I hope you make it. You don't have to say, I, don't, I hope you don't make it. But I'm, I'm just telling you what the book says. He created me to reflect His nature. And we have failed to do that many times because of sin. But God, in His mercy, this is the story. God, in His mercy, I was a, I was a sinner. I was lost without God. God, in His mercy... I, I remember one time, one night in, in Vietnam, I remember we, it was nine of us, our, our squad went out on a reconnaissance and, and we was not supposed to make any contact. And, and our lieutenant told me, he said, whatever you do, don't make a contact. We had nine men. 
We're out there and we're off off in the edge of a rice paddy, out edge of a of a of a clear a thicket, and it wasn't very far out there to the to the thicket, and we dug in, and there we was. It was so dark, man, you could cut it with a knife. As I say, it was dark as a stack of black cats. I mean, dark, man. And we laid there behind a machine gun. I did, and I, I wasn't the gunner. The other man was the gunner. I was assistant gunner. We laid there all night long. The Vietnamese, walk, uh, the Vietnamese army comes so close to us. We could hear their canteen cups and their and their and their whatever it was they had on their on their pistol belts bumping against each other. We just laid there. I'm thinking all the time. I'm gonna. This is gonna be it. Somebody's gonna sneeze or slap a mosquito or somebody's gonna do something ignorant like pop a flare. And, and we think nine men's gonna hook 350. And, and here we are. We had one machine gun, one grenade launcher, and seven M16 rifles and we're going to fight an army? Come on. Well, man, I ain't David. <laughs> or Gideon. So God in His mercy. Yeah. It was God in His mercy. Yeah. That let that army just pass right on by us. <clears throat> just kept right on walking. Were you scared? Why, were you crazy? Yeah, I was scared. I think you could hear the sweat hitting the leaves. Yes, I was scared. Anybody in the right mind would have been scared. But God, in His, while I was a sinner, y'all, I had a wife at home and a brother-in-law and some family praying for me, but I was a sinner. If, that, if we got into, into a conflict with that army, we would have been wiped out within seconds. And I would have been in eternity tonight without God. But God, I'm just to read you something here. But God, in His mercy, and you're sitting here today, and you've been, and you, you're not living for God. It, it's not you that's keeping this thing together. It's not you that's holding your life together. It's not you that's keeping things right. It's the mercy of God. But God, in His mercy, He had not dealt with us according to our sins. The Bible said, keep in mercy, Exodus 34, 7, keep in mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins. It's only God's mercy that we're here today. I, I see other men. Brother Poston, Brother Norton. Brother Norton fought in the northern part of Vietnam. But let me tell you, that's where it was hot. I was in the southern part. We had it made. It's mercy. Brother Roy Norton, it's mercy. Brother Poston, it's mercy that you're sitting here in this service today and you're not in eternity somewhere. It's only God's mercy. It's got nothing to do with us. It's got nothing. It's all God's mercy. But God is also just. He's mercy and He's just. God is going to judge sin. One day, it's going to happen. He judged Noah's day. He judged Sodom and Gomorrah. And He's going to judge the United States of America. But right now, in His mercy, He's bidding people to come on to Him. Come on and live for Him. Get, in, get involved in some Bible-believing church. Get involved in some Holy Ghost-filled church. It's His mercy. One day it's going to turn around. There will be judgment. He judged Sodom and Gomorrah for their sins. He judged the days of Noah for their sins. And you don't ever believe He's going to bypass us. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But in His mercy, right now it's His mercy. A man of God prophesied and told my wife before I ever went to Vietnam. He said, I saw him going, but I see him coming back. Here I am. Here I am. Was it something you... No, no, it wasn't nothing I done. Man, I was like everybody else. I was dodging real bullets. If they shot me, they'd have shot me in the back. But I'm turning the fan on. You say, oh, you were scared. You would have been too. You would have been too. It wasn't a war game at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. It wasn't a war game at Fort Polk, Louisiana. They was firing real bullets. You could count them four. Every, every fourth one was a traitor. You could count them coming. 
He said, what are you saying, Luke? I'm saying it was God's mercy. It was God's mercy that I stand before you today. I personally, I believe. This is what I believe. I believe God looked way downtown. I believe He looked way downtown from 37 years ago back yonder. That He said, that man's going to have to be a pastor there at Covington. So I'm going to have to make sure he don't get hurt. Mercy. Jesus Christ, God in flesh, came to this earth. Every sin will be judged. And here's the deal. God makes you and me totally responsible for our life. None of us, have our minds are so bad that we don't know what's right and what's wrong. I mean, nature teaches us. Ask Paul when you see it. Nature teaches us things. Nature teaches you don't wrong your neighbor. Nature teaches you don't hurt people. Nature teaches you don't go robbing banks. They shoot at you for that. Nature teaches you that. Every one of us, including myself, is hell responsible for my life. If I go to hell, I can't blame my preacher. If I go to hell, I can't blame my Sunday school teacher. If I go to hell, I can't blame Mark McLean over here. If he had done a little better, if he had tightened up his belt loop, if he had tightened up his bootstrap, then I would have done better because I would have seen him. I can't point the finger at nobody. If I don't make it, I'm responsible. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. I don't have to be a, a rocket scientist. I don't have to have money. Hallelujah. I don't have to have prestige. I don't have to have education. Somebody said, well, I just ain't got it. You don't have to have no education. The only thing, you got to understand, please understand, you're responsible. Oh, and when you stand before that big old judge, you're going to have to give an account of your life. He's not going to say, well, Bud done it. Or Jeff done it. Or Terry done it. No, it's going to be Brother Creasy done it. Or Brother Creasy didn't do it. Well, I don't understand it. You don't have to understand it. Just do it. Just you don't have. To, what's hard about repenting? What is repenting? Repenting is turning from sin and turning to God. Boy, ain't that deep. You just about have to have a have a college degree to understand what turn around means. Repentance. It means to turn from a life of sin. God became flesh. So you and I could be saved. I'm going to read it to you. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. John 14, 1. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. He was in, he, in Him was life. And the light was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which light of every man that cometh unto the world. He was in the world, the world was made by him, the world knew him not. He came to his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name which was born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. This is a God thing, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 14 tells the whole story. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God became man to save people from their sins. From their sins, Matthew 1, 21, and she shall bring forth a son that shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. All you've got to do is ask God to forgive you, turn your life around, come to him, and live for him. That's it. Once you do that, then God takes over. Jesus died on the cross. He rose again the third day, and he paid the penalty for our sins. 
He paid it all. Isaiah 53 and 6 said, All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He paid the price for me. No longer do I have to go to devil's hell. No longer am I, am I a sinner. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a sinner saved by grace. And we got to believe. We got to believe what I just told you. If you don't believe that, if you want to be saved, you got to believe the Word of God. Not just have faith, but have saving faith. You know what the difference I, This is just me now. Saving faith is faith that keeps you when times are tough. Saving faith. James said, you believe in one God, you do, you do it well. The devils believe that and tremble. I'm not talking about just believing that there's one God. I'm talking about having saving faith. Faith that keeps you going when you just don't feel like going. I just know some things. Just know some things. My wife told a story. I don't know if she's ever told it here or not. I don't recall. She told a story that before I got in church, she would get up every morning and get the kid, or every Sunday morning, get the kids ready, take them to Sunday school, go back that night, Wednesday nights, all the and and I didn't go. And finally, it, it got she got so discouraged with it one day that what's the use? And she decided she wasn't just was not going to go to church. If I wasn't going, she wasn't going. And then it clicked on her. Something happened. Sister Norton, she said, if he don't want to go, if he wants to go to hell, I ain't going to hell with him. I'm going to go to church and live for God. That's what kind of faith I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just saying, well, I believe in God. Well, my Lord, the devil does that. You ain't got a thing on the devil. That's right. That's right. That's right. But saving faith. Amen. It keeps me, John Pruitt, when I'm in trouble. It keeps me when I feel bad. When I feel like backslap. It keeps me. It keeps me. Saving faith. I'm going to try to hurt. So we got to repent. Number one, we got to repent of our sins. There was present at that season some that told him, told Jesus, I believe in Luke 13, 1, of the Galatians whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galatians were sinners above all because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay. Except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. It's repent or perish. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man, read it, Mr. TV Evangelist, no man that one lives somewhere between New York and California, read it. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You take the name of Jesus out, you ain't preaching. You may be a good speaker, but you ain't a good preacher. Just give me an old clod hopping uh, farm boy that used to walk behind a pair of mules five days a week. If he preaches me the truth, I'll support him. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Repent. Repent means turn from sin and turn to God. That's repentance. Repentance, are you ready? I want to ask you, are you ready to repent? Turn him from sin. Turn to God. Not just come up here and cry some tears. Turn from sin and turn to God. Are you ready to let God take over your life? God, whatever you want to do, are you ready to turn to God with all your heart? Read with me John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name, Mr. TV, evangelist from California to New York. Read it. Them that believe on his name. Are you ready to do that? Is anybody in here today that wants to ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to give God full control of your life? Are you ready to change some things in your life? Turn some things around? Are you ready? Are you ready for God's mercy? 
Is anybody in here ready? Are you ready to repent? Are you ready? The water is ready if you're ready. Romans 10, 9 said, But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you, are you ready for that? Are you ready to, for that? For with the heart men believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, if I say I believe, and, and, and he said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If I believe, I got saved in faith, I will be saved, ladies and gentlemen, in my house. I'm telling you what, I'm reading right, right out of the Word of God. I'm telling you what the Scripture teaches us. Are you ready? Are you ready for all of that? Are you ready to make a change in your life? You say, I've been a church member all my life. I'm not talking about your church membership. I'm not talking, I, that's good. I'm glad you are. I'm glad everybody's in church. I think everybody ought to belong to a church. You need a preacher that can come up with some kind of words halfway decent for you when you kick the bucket. You don't, you don't want the funeral director to have to come up with somebody. You don't, my Lord, come on. Have a man of God that your wife can pick the phone up and say, Pastor, my husband just died. Will you do the service? Well, of course, you know. I mean, you see what I'm saying? You need a, you need a church. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about faith that keeps you going. What are you going to do if the church door is closed? There's been a bunch of them done it. I don't look for this one too until the rapture takes place. Then I don't care what they do. But what would you do? What would you do if you come in here Wednesday night and the church door was locked and nobody's here? The pastor, you don't know where he got off to. He's off somewhere, you know, flying a kite. What would you do? He said, well, I don't know. I never thought about it. Well, you better think about it. What are you going to do if they come walking in the back door back there and, and, and come up here and say, come on, Brother Creasy. He said, you, I mean, you, you're going to have to go with us. And I'm going to fight like two old cobcats, man. I'm going to claw and bite and pinch and stick my fingers in their eyes and everything I can possibly do. But what will you do? You say, oh, that's not going to happen. It has happened in countries. It has happened. Preachers have been killed for the gospel. So what would we do? I'm not talking about Mark. I'm talking about membership. I'm talking about faith that keeps you. So are we ready for that? So the question was asked, what must I do? I'm going to ask that question. What must we do? The Word of God gives us all the answers. I know I didn't cover it well. I didn't cover them all, but I covered enough. I covered enough. If you'll listen to it, it'll help you. What will you do with Jesus? Come to the piano, Sister Chrissy, or somebody. What would you do with Jesus if he walked in the door this morning and walked down the aisle standing here beckoning with his hands? I know what you do. I know exactly what you do. You would get out of that pit. I wouldn't have to say, would you come? You'd break neck getting down to be, to touch, just to touch it. Sure you would. I would too. Of course, we'd be crazy if we wouldn't. If we knew it was Jesus, we'd, John, we'd run, man. But he's here. You just don't see him. But he's here. He's standing here. Not me. Jesus. And he's wanting people to come. Just come and talk to him. I've, I've told people. They, they, they call me about something. I said, why didn't, you, why didn't you come talk to me about that? Well, I didn't want to bother you. Come on, be real. Why do you think God called me? Jesus wants you to bother me. He wants you to bother me. Who would come today? As we stand. Who would walk down the aisles? Stand or kneel in the front and talk to Jesus. Who would do that? Just come on. You don't have to have any, any further invitation. Just come on. If you want to come and stand and talk to Jesus. Or kneel, whichever way you prefer to do it. Just come. Just come.
God bless you. We'll have church again at 5.30 tonight. Everybody come on back. Thank you for all of our guests today. We appreciate you. And uh, welcome you to come back anytime and every time. Amen. God bless you. Just raise your hand and say, Lord, thank you for a beautiful service. Amen. You're dismissed.